time, in fact, even before that, once upon eternity, before time even began, there was God. God was perfect and needed nothing. God was love and light and peace. But God was also creative and loved to make things. So out of love, God created everything. Out of the darkness, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Then lit by this light, God carried on creating. And God loved what God made. Stars, planets, landscapes, plants, animals and people. And God saw that it was good. All was good. God loved the people most of all, but it made him sad that they chose to sit in darkness instead of enjoying the light which God had created for them to live in. God sent messengers to tell people how to live in God's light, but people ignored them. God sent instructions for how to live so that they could help one another flourish and thrive but they didn't follow the instructions. So God was sad and longed for the people to live in the light. God wanted them to see the truth, to know God's love and see themselves as they truly are. And God so loved the world and God so loved all the people in the world that he sent Jesus, his only son, into the world. And so the scene is set, the world is waiting. So let us retell the amazing story of how God's Son was born.
Joseph was a practical man, a carpenter. He made tables and chairs, and he made doorways and cupboards and handy shelves. He liked to make things well and made a proper job of it. But he was making a right mess of things in his personal life. The lass he was engaged to, Mary, was expecting a baby, but Joseph knew it wasn't his. He loved Mary, but because of what everyone would say and think, he decided to call the, call the wedding off. What a mess. But that night, Joseph had a really vivid dream. And in that dream, God's messenger angel appeared right there in front of him and said, don't break off your engagement, Joseph. Mary's done nothing wrong. In fact, God has blessed her and chosen her to be the mother of God's own son. The promised King. When he's born, you're to call him Jesus the Saviour, because he is going to save his people from all the darkness and take away their sins. When Joseph awoke, he was a changed man. All the heaviness of his heart and the darkness of his thoughts had been melted away by the words of God's special messenger. He knew that he really was going to go ahead and marry Mary and look after this special baby with her. So when the Emperor Augustus announced that everybody in the empire had got to go and register in the town that they came from, Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem because his family were descended from King David and Bethlehem was the town that King David had been born in. So Joseph took Mary on a long journey on dusty roads all the way to Bethlehem. A donkey carried their food, warm blankets and cloaks for the chilly nights and clothes for the baby that was due to be born any day now. Little donkey, little donkey, what a dusty road. How to keep on rotting on us with your precious load. In a long time, little donkey, to the winter's night. Don't give up. They were really tired after their journey, but when they got to the house of some relatives of Joseph, whom they were going to stay with, there was a problem. The living quarters were full of other relatives, and there certainly wouldn't have been enough room for Mary to have her baby in there. So when Mary went into labour, it had to be in the room downstairs, where the animals slept. It was dirty and smelly there, but at least the animals helped to keep the room warm. And there was a handy feed trough called a manger where Mary could pop her newborn to sleep in. St Luke tells us what happened next. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. 
And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was not enough space for them in the living quarters. No silver cross pram, just a crying new baby with his dad and his mam. The wood worms in the roof beams look down where he lay. Just the little lad of Jesus trying to sleep in some hay. The darkness can be scary, even adults have fears. But God's presence is with us, even in awful years. Whatever tribulations we must live with today, we have learned God is with us through that glad in the day. You're near us, always Jesus, you decided to stay in the world you created. Everywhere, every day, bless us, your dear children, for whose welfare you came. As we seek heaven's kingdom here on earth, in your name. The shepherds were bored as they sat in the darkness in a field on a hill outside Bethlehem. They were keeping an ear out for wolves and were hoping for a quiet night, keeping their sheep safe. But it wasn't a silent night, at least not for very long, because there was a sudden burst of light in the sky, so bright that the sheep didn't even dare bleat in fear. Out of that blaze of light, came the voice of God's messenger angel. Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you this day is born in the city of David a saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom God favours. When the angels had left the shepherds and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that's taken place which God has told us all about. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. The shepherds watch their flocks by night all seated on of the Lord came down, the angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around, and glory shone around, and glory shone around. Fear not, said he, the mighty dread, at ease their troubled mind. Glad tides in our great joy I bring, glad tides in our great joy I bring. Swathing bands, all windy wrapped in 
trailing bars. And in a manger late, and in a manger late, and in a manger late, those faithful servants go with a bed of shining straw. All the angels raising God who does, all the angels raising God who does, address the joyful song, address the joyful song. So that is the story of the birth of Jesus. But that's not the end of God's story of love and light and peace. Shepherds and Joseph's family would have been among the very first visitors to see Jesus. And later on, people from other parts of the world came to visit. The wise men who came from the East. And we shall celebrate that in church early next year. And Jesus, of course, didn't stay a baby forever. He grew up to be a man who healed the sick, performed many miracles, taught people who he was and how to live as citizens of God's kingdom. Later still, Jesus died on a cross and on Easter day rose from death. Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem, shows us that God is with us in the messiness of ordinary human life. Jesus, the man who died on the cross, shows us that God is with us even in the middle of suffering and death. And Jesus, risen from death, shows us that death is not where the story ends. God's light won the battle. The darkness didn't win. God's light, revealed in Jesus, shines brightly, shines forever, a beacon of hope for the world. And through Jesus, we all can live in the light of God's love forever. And so may the joy of the angels and the eagerness of the shepherds and the obedience of Joseph and Mary and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. Amen. Mm -hmm.